Well, I gotta say guys, sitting in front of you right here is some of the best EDC knives in terms of gentleman's carry and thinness. I absolutely adore these knives. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, I hope you all had a great Christmas and spent time with family and had a great time and ate a lot of food. Um, today I'm talking about the Kershaw Leak. Really and truly still one of my absolute favorites. I'd say at least in the top 10. You know, I've done a lot of things with these knives. I haven't carried them as much as some of my other ones, like my, you know, my old Spydercos and my old Benchmates. But there's something about this particular knife that always brings me back to it every now and then, just to have a quick go at it, you know. A lot of it has to do with that beautiful speed safe actuation system. I love that spring assist. It's a great, fast, and really reliable deploy, deploying method. No blade play. I've always loved the speed safe. It is a really lightning quick opening mechanism. So you got your flipper tab there and you open up the knife a little, little bit of the way and then that spring is gonna take over and just rip that knife right open for you. Really cool. I've always been a fan of Kershaw Speed Safe. I think it's one of the best spring assisted opening mechanisms. Now spring assisted is not automatic. You know, a lot of people think that the automatic and the spring assist are kind of the same thing. They ain't. Automatic is a completely different uh, animal. Speed Safe is still technically a, a completely, um, I would say, it's with, within the realm of law. It, it's not, it, there's nothing um, automatic about it in any way, shape, or form. It's just a spring that's helping you assist the knife in opening it uh, all the way. And that you'll notice that this knife is a little bit dirty in the pivot there. That's why it's not actuating all the way. So this one actually needs a little bit of a clean. So this one, this one belongs to the girlfriend, and this one here is mine. This one's way older. Uh, I carried this for quite a number of months consecutively, way back in, I'd say, oh, about 2012. Um, and uh, really and truly at that time, I was really kind of, I guess I was intrigued by how thin it was, and obviously the blade shape right because this little tip here this thing is a beast you know you can basically scribe and cut with this tip i always loved that about this knife for piercing tasks it's like the king man and for um i don't know a really fine precise piercing it's it's just it's the cat's meow so I don't know, you know, it, it really fills a lot of roles. It's not just limited to tasks where you have to pierce, you know, something very precisely. You can do anything else with the knife that you would do with any other knife. It's just that this tip is a little bit dicey for me because it is quite delicate. And, um, you know, I've already broken a tip on one of these Ken, these, uh, these Ken onion knives, um, in the onion series and i'm gonna bring them out for you because this was the third one in the lineup so the leak came in as the third knife in the onion set and i'm gonna bring out the first one the first one was the chive this one is the girlfriend's this is very old and you can see that's the tip that broke and all it was was she um she put it into a piece of wood and she just reefed on it a tiny bit and uh, that's all it took right so that's the chive um, got two of those. Got one in the stainless steel. Very old classic knives. Um, you know, these knives have been around for a very long time. I think 1998 or something along there, maybe early 2000s. I'm not 100% on the date that these actually came out, but they're very old now. And I think a lot of people know this one. A lot of people tend to own this one or they've been gifted it. Kershaw seems to be gifted a lot. A lot of people pick up Kershaws as gifts because I think you can get them at Walmart. I think you can get them at a variety of places. So that was the first one. That was the little guy. That was like more of a fifth pocket carry. And then came the Scallion. And this was more of a regular sized EDC knife uh, that just sort of fit the pocket well, had a nice decent clip on it, and uh, was just a really a very normal like two inch two inch uh, blade you know everyday carry knife uh, i liked this one a lot too actually it was very uh very slicey it was nice to do a little bit of food prep with it it's a little small though um cool little knife though very cool and then we have the uh the last one in the lineup that got discontinued forever ago and that is the shallot right and that one's going to come in just after the leak did 
So as you can hear, they're all just named after onions, right? So we got the chive, the little guy, we got the scallion, regular size, we got the long shaped leek, and then we got the shallot, which is the big boy here, right? And then you got, this one had a combo edge. This one's really cool, actually. This was a very nice knife. And it's a shame that, you know, these, well, I mean, it's not really a shame. I mean, I, I guess they weren't really selling that well, but uh, I always had a partial liking to this one here. Um, never really used it, never really took it out, but still, just the fact that it was such a cool little sleek knife, had a really thin handle, very, very cool looking blade shape to it too, with like a, this like drop point, but like a wedge in it there. And it just kind of it goes down at, a, at an angle like that. I thought that was always very, very cool. But the favorite of mine will always remain this Kershaw leak. I just feel that this this shape is seriously cool for like, especially like gentlemen's carry. Um, it's a very slim down design. Um, and it just, it has that profile that you would want for like a suit, suit pocket or a suit jacket. I mean, maybe there's probably better options today. Like for example, the CRKT CEO, I think that's, I think that's a CRKT knife. That one seems like also a very thin type of gentleman's carry, but this one always seemed to do the job, especially when I would wear a suit for whatever reason that might've been. This one seemed to really work well. And, you know, I didn't take my pocket clip off of my one until a lot later because even with the clip on, it's still an incredibly thin knife. As you can tell here, it's, in, it's a very thin knife with a really long and deep pocket clip on it that has excellent edge retention. So it's really going to fit that office worker slash, you know, groomsman maybe you know at a wedding or some event or more of a business traveler it's going to fit them really well it's just very nice and elegant really fits into office environments well is what i would personally say about it very very cool for that so for this one you know let's get some stats out of the way and um for the leak you know you have a blade length of about three inches you're rocking 14C28N from Sandvik, and that's going to be at 58 to 60 HRC. You got a closed length of th uh, four inches, and uh, your weight on them, uh, if you got the stainless steel version, you're going to come in at around three ounces. But for this version, which is the aluminum with the Cerakote, uh, you're coming in a little lower. You're coming in at 2.4 ounces which is crazy uh, to think about because it's actually, it's not the smallest knife when it's in your hand, but it's not, it's not overly large, obviously, as you can tell, but it's not the smallest knife, but it, for its weight, it's, it's well balanced for its weight. Um, you got, you got a real thin blade on it, 0 0.09 uh, inches on the blade thickness there. Uh, you have a handle thickness of 0 0.31. Yeah. So all in all, it's just, it's just really, sounding like a great EDC, uh, especially for like more uh, formal settings. That's really the way I've always viewed it. That's the way I like to rock it. I love taking it places where I know it's more, I got to be a bit more prim and proper, but it's not limited to that. You know, I don't want it to make it sound like, oh, that's what it's limited to. This is, this knife will do hard work. In fact, I mean, I know personally that there was a company I worked for. Uh, it was a landscape company many years ago. And the mechanic that, uh, you know, repaired the trucks and the, and the small engines, he used to carry a Kershaw leak with him. It was the black washed uh, version with the uh, stainless steel handle, I believe. And it was the black wash all through the handle and the blade. And man, he rocked that thing. He used that thing for everything. He used it for anything and his tip was completely just torn to pieces. The tip was like broken off flat and he just kept going with it because he loved it. So it's just as it's, it's enough knife that he needs. He doesn't need anything else. And I mean, there's lots of people with stories like that about this knife. It's really a household name. I mean, the Kershaw leak is like literally legendary now in the knife community. It's, it's one of the best and I certainly enjoy it. It's one of the few knives that I enjoy with a smooth handle. I'm not super big on smooth handles, but this one, because again, it's the, the blade shape and it's elegance, I really enjoy how smooth those aluminum handles are. And, uh, you know, they come in a variety of colors and blade steels now. There's so many collectible ones. Um, you can really find a lot. There's Damascus ones. There's 
uh, different types of steels. Like I'm not entirely sure. I know the Sandvik is probably the most popular version of it. There's been, I think there's been D2 versions of it over the years. I think there's been like, oh, I don't know. There's definitely been an S30V version of it. I know that, but there's plenty. There's, there's so many. And then they, they get discontinued. So then they get a little bit more collectible, which is very, very cool. And, um, yeah, I don't know. It's just very cool knife. Now, this one here particularly has a liner lock. You're going to get the liner lock if you get the ones with the aluminum scales, generally speaking. Um, but uh, if you get the stainless steel one, they're going to come with a frame lock. Honestly, personally, I still think I like the liner lock a little better. Uh, especially for a knife this thin. just makes it that much more sleek and elegant. And, um, yeah, it's the, I've never had a problem with the lock. Granted, I've never done anything hard use with it, but for what it does do, it's, it's fantastic. And it has this little blade lock at the end there, because I guess the thing about this knife that's really funny is that some people are actually really scared of it. Uh, or at least, yeah, it's a very small amount of people that are very scared of the knife actuating because that tip is so fine. And because that, that, that speed safe, opening mechanism is coming out quite quickly that people just get scared of it and they think it's going to tear them up tear them up or cut them or i mean if you think that way you probably shouldn't really be having a knife with you i mean you need to know i mean it's not really that big of, it's not that different from a manual action in many ways like a manual action can be just as fast but it's just i think it's the shape of this knife that makes people scared and the fact that it has a spring assist in it and i mean it's, again it's not it's a very small amount of people that think that um but I think that's the reason why this is here because that way it won't actuate accidentally in your pocket. As you can see, I can't really do anything there. But yeah, I mean, either or. So talking about the steel a little bit, Sandvik is very cool. It's a very like, it's a mysterious steel. Like, I, I don't know, they the, the, the it holds an edge for a decent amount of time. It's highly corrosion resistant, um, but it's incredibly easy to put an edge back on it. Just super, super easy to put an edge on. Uh, and again, it's one of those steels that like, you know, it holds an edge for this amount of time. And then to put the edge back on, it just doesn't make any sense like how easy it is to put an edge back on for how long the edge gets held. It's nothing like, again, I, I always compared like K390 and Maxima and stuff. It's nothing like that. It's, it's, not, it's definitely not like that. But it, for what it, for an EDC blade for doing EDC tasks, the edge really holds for quite a while, for quite a while, right? And, and that's really all I'm asking for it, for the price of it, for, you know, in Canada, I am I see them for about between $120, $120 and $150, depending on what variant you're going to buy of this knife. And in the States, I'm seeing them for about 60 to, I believe, 90 to 100 depending on the variant that you're going to buy. But the, the prices seem to be quite varied across the board for what you're getting here. So, you know, you might find one that on a better deal somewhere else as compared to something else, but you can also get them at like Walmart and stuff, I believe. I don't know if they're genuine Kershaw's, but I mean, they could, they, they should be right. If they say the name on it, it's kind of like a buck thing, like a, like a buck knife or a Camillus knife in a sense like that way. You know, I think they obviously picked up a contract for some of those stores. I don't, I don't know though. I'm not saying that's the truth. I just, I, I happen to know that people have seen them at Walmart uh, and stuff like that. So, I mean, yeah, it really, it can fulfill a lot of roles. You can hard use them. Uh, it's just really that this tip is what you really want to, um, uh, watch out for because that's the only part of it that really I feel is like a weakness to it but at the same time it's like its biggest asset I, I mean really and truly like it just pierces so so well and that's what I love about it it's just like a very cool little pocket like a pointy pocket stick you know um why don't we get some size comparisons uh here for for a, for a few of these knives here I've got here's an old one this is a very old one. This is the Benchmade Axis Striker. I don't even remember what the model number is on this one. This is the 154 CM blade steel. Also another really great, well-rounded steel. This one's seen some use in its day. I use this one quite a lot. And uh, there's the leak next to it. 
Uh, this is a big knife. This is essentially a this is essentially a Benchmade 915 triage. That's the same handle and everything, but this was just a little bit of a different blade. Uh, it didn't come with the N680 rescue style blade. This came with a 154 cm, more of a more of a sharp point, uh, more of a drop point uh, uh, type blade. But there it is against the leak there. And then we got a pair of three here. I will go choil to choil. And there's your pair of three. Cool little knife, this. I like this knife a lot. I don't like it as much as my uh, paramilitary two, but I still like the knife and I love the S45 VN steel. All the lanyards that are on my knives, I do myself. Um, they're just very simple snake knots, but I just put a little bead on there. Um, spider cone knives are very good for that. But there's that, choil to choil, and then butt to butt, you know. Those are all quite quite a lot more bulky uh, compared to the leak. And then here's an Endura 4, since everybody knows this knife right now. There's choil to choil. And then there's butt to butt. And then one more, we'll do one more. This knife, I'm gonna do a review on this knife. I, I can't get over how cool this knife is. This is the Rake uh, P801. And I just freaking love this knife, man. <laughs> This is such a bargain, this knife. I'm going to talk about this knife, uh, and I'm going to do a review on it, actually. So there's choil to choil, and then there's butt to butt right there. This one, too. This is a very thin knife. This is comparable. Kershaw League's a little thinner, but it's comparable. Okay, so yeah. I mean, the leak is really... It's a, it's a staple now in the uh, knife world. There's a lot of people that still just absolutely adore the knife, and it's really, it's really easy to see why, you know, with its very high hollow grind. I think it's a high hollow grind. Some people are argue that it's a, that it's a flat grind, but it, it seems, seems shallow enough to me to be a hollow grind. I mean, it feels like a hollow grind. It's, it's, it's extremely thin on the edge there and it slices like crazy. You know, it's a, it's a very cool uh, knife for just everything really and you can also do food prep with it too right like it just it slices man it's not a, it's a it doesn't uh it doesn't mess around right like right and i haven't sharpened that in all oh, years right hope i don't start crying <laughs> so i mean it's sharp, guys. It, it holds a really great edge. You know, you got a great opening system. I love the speed safe. Very fast. Super elegant, super sleek. If you want something that's more on that end, uh, this is probably one to look at. It's really reasonably, reasonably priced. It's got great steel on it. Uh, 14C28N is a voodoo steel as well. Very, like, I, I consider Magna Cut, like, a voodoo steel. I also consider... 14c28 on a voodoo steel I, the, it's like it's sort of like the the steel from victorinox it just seems to do everything so weirdly well like 14c is uh, 28n is a very odd but very very cool steel very well rounded extremely corrosion resistant um yeah worth the money uh, and Kershaw is a is a great company. They make really good knives, and my experience with the leak over the years has been nothing but great. Um, I, as a as a guy who likes thin knives, the Kershaw leak is definitely up there in terms of some of my absolute favorite knives of all time. So, if you guys are in the market for a thin knife, um. I would definitely, and you and you want something that's maybe a little bit more zippy than a manual action, the Kershaw Leak is still going to probably fit the bill for a lot of people. It still has that reputation to it, and it's got that reliability behind it, and um, you really can't go wrong with a good old-fashioned Kershaw Leak. And on that note, guys, I'm going to end this review and say that, yeah... I would seriously consider a Kershaw leak as a formal pocket carry 
for sure. For me personally, for my line of work, it doesn't do the greatest job for blue collar environments, at least in my own opinion, but people definitely use them in blue collar settings. Uh, some people break the tips, some people don't break the tips. Uh, that's the only thing that I'm generally concerned about with this blade. That's it. But it all, at the same time, it's also its greatest asset. And yeah, that's really all I have to say, guys. So on that note, I'm going to end the review. And I really want to take the time to thank you for watching. And thank you to all the new subscribers. And um, please like and subscribe uh, if you guys want to see more content like this. I'm going to keep going with the knives that I have experience with. And uh, yeah, hopefully I can just give you guys some great info. So uh, thanks a lot, guys. And enjoy your New Year's. Take care.